Hello and welcome to another edition of the BCSN Sports Wrap. Brian and AD here and joining us for a conversation on the late basketball Hall of Famer, Coach John Chaney. Uh, Mr. Donald Hunt, uh, sports writer for the Philadelphia Tribune, also a contributor with ESPN's The Undefeated and an author of the book called Chaney Playing for a legend in which uh, he was able to work with a couple of John Chaney's former player players, NBA stars, Eddie Jones and Aaron McKee, who actually currently Aaron McKee is actually the current head coach at Temple University. Uh, so we welcome on to the show, Donald Hunt. Mr. Hunt, how are you doing today? Thank you for your time. Yeah, I'm doing great. How are you guys making out? We're doing well, doing well. Hopefully Good. you and your, you and yeah, your family doing well, are definitely. doing well during this pandemic. Um, so let, let's, let's start. Let me, let me start by asking you how far back uh, is your relationship with coach Cheney? Well, I'll just start the first time I, I saw coach Cheney. I'll, then let's go back there. Um, and I was, I don't know if I was mentioning this to you the other day, but and I was a young guy um, here in Philadelphia to have something called the Baker League at that time, like in the uh, late 60s, I'll tell you how old I am. And Coach Chaney was coaching in the Baker League, and he was coaching a team called Kent Taverniers. And on that team, they had Hal Greer and Chet Walker, two Hall of Famers that played on the 1966-67 76ers NBA championship team, which was voted to greatest team in the history of the NBA. And um, I said, who is this guy telling Jet Walker and Al Greer where to go and what to do? That guy sitting next to me said, it was John Chaney. He's the coach. And I told Coach this when he was, you know, alive and everything, and he started laughing. And uh, that was my first time seeing him, and he was coaching at that time. And then um, – I guess around that time, a little bit later, he uh, was also coaching on the high school level here in Philadelphia. He coached at Simon Gratz and, you know, did an outstanding job. And then from there, he moved to Cheney State, which is now Cheney University. And um, when he was at Cheney State, I was at Lincoln University. And uh, Lincoln and Cheney are two of the oldest HBCUs in the country and uh, were arch rivals, uh, just like... Um, North Carolina A&T and North Carolina Central and Coppin and Morgan and and uh, Grambling and Southern and schools like that, Alabama State, Alabama A&M. And um, Cheney had some great teams at Cheney State. Uh, they were really, really good. They played uh, outstanding basketball. They played fundamental basketball. They, they you know, fast break when the opportunity was there and um, – they had some terrific players. A lot of them were from the Philadelphia Public League and Philadelphia area, and uh, coached a fantastic job there. And he also coached at Cheney State when Vivian Stringer was there. And I think I was mentioning this to you, Brian. I mean, you had two. Looking back now, you have two Hall of Fame coaches at an HBCU, and I think the only other school that has that um, distinction is uh, University of Connecticut. Uh, with uh, Jim Calhoun and um, uh, Gino Oriema. So, you know, that's that's some uh, very good company, and, and Connecticut is certainly a much larger school than Cheney. Um, but um, he was he was there then, and he had some great teams. And, you know, I was a student then, and I used to watch those games. And, you know, the Lincoln-Cheney games were always packed and exciting. He had a lot of friends at both schools. The schools were close. And um, I think uh, 1978 is when they won the national championship. And then in 1982, um, Temple uh, hired Coach Cheney. And um, that was a really significant move. Uh, he went from Cheney to a major Division One program, Temple. And I think the President Lee, of course, who hired him at that time, probably had visions of what uh, was going on in D.C. With, with Georgetown and John Thompson and the success he was having or you know, the program that he was building at that time. And he thought Cheney could come and 
do similar things, which he, you know, actually did in a lot of ways. So uh, I actually started covering Coach in the 80s, you know, when he was at Temple. So I've known him personally since, like, 84, you know, and um, I've learned a lot from him. He's a great guy, uh, an outstanding uh, coach, and uh, and also an outstanding basketball player as well. Um, you know, he played some great basketball here in Philadelphia, uh, was Public League Player of the Year in 1950, and also played at Bethune-Cookman. It was an NAI All-American, scored over 3,000 points down there. And then he also played in the Eastern League. So, I mean, he and, and he did well. I think he made like seven or eight all-star teams, was MVP. Uh, coach was a great coach, great athlete, great player, and uh, just a, a great individual as well because uh, he was uh, a guy that not only knew basketball, but he knew a lot about life. And uh, he really cared about his players. He cared about this community. And he knew the importance of education. So he um, he did some great things uh, in his lifetime here. Well, let, let me ask about that. As you, you How much of his um, – the love affiliation that uh, Philly has for him or how much, you know, that's tied up in Philly really starts with that time of him as a, as a, as a youth basketball star in uh, Philadelphia, those, those high school years prior to him going to um, Cookman. Well, I mean, he, he was well known in the city of Philadelphia. I mean, you know, Coach was public league player of the year, and um, uh, he played some outstanding basketball in the public league. In the public league, he had some tremendous players. Um, uh, it was phenomenal, and I believe his senior year, they won the uh, the league championship. And folks really knew Coach, and he you know, played a lot of basketball in the city, and played in uh, different leagues and rec centers and that sort of thing, you know, outside of high school basketball, um, but had a great career. And, um, you know, from there, he, like I said, he moved to uh, Bethune-Cookman. But, I mean, people knew him and, uh, you know, Coach was, uh, yeah, he was he was well-known in the city. All right. All right, Dom, A.D. Drew here. Uh, obviously, over the last week, two weeks uh, since uh, since Coach Cheney's passed, and everybody has talked about the basketball, the coaching, and things of that nature. But mm-hmm. you know, what I would like you to do is kind of go off the court with uh, John Cheney, kind of tell about his impact in the, in the community and some of the other things that people are not talking about with Coach Cheney right now. Yeah, well, he had a strong impact in the community. Um, he was highly intelligent. Uh, John Cheney, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, in addition to you know coaching when he was in high school, he also taught. And he taught 17 years in the school district of Philadelphia. And he was extremely knowledgeable in terms of education. And one thing he told me, he said, in public education particularly, you need to pour money and resources into the primary grades because that's where you set the foundation for kids to learn and develop at that early age. And then that sets the blueprint to move forward in terms of developing educationally, okay, and learning and getting to the level that, you know, kids need to get to in order to be able to come out and compete in society. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, basketball was a part of it, but Coach was just really, really um, knowledgeable on a lot of things. Um, Also, I remember him saying that, um, you know, with basketball, he wanted to use basketball to make better lives for the kids and for their families and for their communities. And he recruited a lot of kids from the inner city, okay, and a lot of kids from disadvantaged families because he grew up in a situation where 
he didn't have a lot of resources, and he wanted to provide them with an opportunity to not only play basketball, but to use basketball as a vehicle to being successful down the road, which means getting an education, coming out, getting a job, and then going back to your community, starting with your family first, and inspiring them to go on to higher education. When he went into the Hall of Fame, if you guys can get a copy of the speech or it's in my book, um, he has a line, as you rise, you must lift. I'm going to say it again. As you rise, you must lift. And that's what Coach went by. And he wanted to provide an opportunity for kids to not only play basketball, but to get a good education and to go back to their families and help their families and help their communities because that's how you strengthen society. See, he, you know, and with basketball, you know, he had the matchup zone. And he would talk about, okay, now the ball goes over to the corner. Where are you supposed to be? And the players would say, okay, coach, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be there. He went over the fundamentals. But there's also fundamentals in life. And some things don't change, okay? And you can use the basic fundamentals to be successful. And that's what he did. All right. Uh, and you say he, he, was, he was an educator. So one thing Yeah, he taught 17 years in, in in the school district of Philadelphia and he had he, he had a uh, a sharp mind. I mean, he really did like if you sat down and talked to him, he would explain everything. Like I was saying like, you know, you could you could see it he was a teacher also inside of his coaching. Like you could see it when he was on the court. Like I went to a few of those 6 a.m. practices. And see, that was also devised to have the kids come and practice, but also to get basketball practice out of the way so they can be sure to get to class on time and study and meet with their academic advisors, do all the other things that they need to do to be a well-rounded student athlete. And, and you, you went exactly where I was going with, uh, with that, uh, those, those six a.m. practices and some of those other idiosyncrasies that he uh, kind of made famous and brought and brought to the game. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it was early, and uh, you know, you had to, you know, make sure you got to bed on time. I mean, there's a lot of discipline. Like he had, in terms of intelligence, he also had discipline. And, you know, if you got to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you're going to make sure you get to bed at the proper time so you can get there and be on time for practice. And then after practice, it allows you to go on to, uh, to, uh, to your classes, okay, and do what you have to do the rest of the day. So he set the table that way, and it was very successful for him because – he was there for 24 years and uh, coached it, you know, a lot of the same things year after year. Now, Coach Cheney was at Cheney State uh, at the time, now Cheney University, for 10 years, uh, probably. It, it was definitely in the 70s, uh, from about 72 well, to Well, it was 70, it, yeah, 72 to 82, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's it's well documented the 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 low budget in recruiting the dollars that he had, um, but that didn't that didn't stop him. I mean, he had um, the the two hundred something wins, and I think two twenty nine and sixty is by my count the number I came up with. What when you talked with him, and as you talked with him about the Cheney State years, what you know that would have been when he was in his forties. And so the transition, I guess, going from that to Temple, what did you find out as you talked with him about those years that led him to Temple or, or that helped him become the iconic figure that most of America came to know um, at Temple? Well, I mean, when he was at Cheney State, he was there for 10 years and he was very successful. And... Um, he basically already had the blueprint of success there because 
he recruited a lot of kids from the Philadelphia area, particularly the public league. He knew all the coaches because he played in the public league, and he also uh, knew a lot of the coaches around the city and, and what have you. And although, you know, he probably didn't get as much exposure from his success, people knew about the Cheney program. I mean, even before John Cheney got there, Cheney University had a really good basketball program. I mean, they, they really did. They had some, some great coaches before Coach uh, Tony Coma and Hal Blitman, and those guys were very, very successful. But when Coach uh, took over, he put his stamp on the program. And in doing so, he got a lot of recognition. Now, um, he had, like I said, you know, pretty much a formula in place that once he moved from Cheney to Temple, he knew exactly what he was going to do. But one thing he did at Temple is that he scheduled the toughest teams that he could find, okay? And a lot of those games were on national TV, like he played North Carolina, he played UNLV, he played Duke, he played Michigan State, he played Maryland. He played a lot of the nationally known programs. And he would go there and play because he couldn't even get a home game at that time in most cases. Uh, they played in McGonagall Hall, which is right next to the Lear Course Center. And McGonagall Hall held about 3,900, 4,000 people. And the place was always packed when Temple played there. And... Um, so he wanted to uh, build Temple into a nationally recognized program. Uh, Temple had a nice program. They were in the Big Five. And the Big Five, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but that's uh, a very unique situation. In Philadelphia, we have five Division One programs that compete against each other each year. That's Temple. That's Penn. That's LaSalle. That's St. Joseph's. And it's Villanova, okay? And then we also have Drexel, too, but they're not a part of the Big Five. But then we have actually have six Division One schools in Philadelphia. Okay, that's really unique. You can go all around the country. You won't find six Division One schools in one city, okay? In one city, yeah. right. Right, exactly, okay. And five that play against each other in a uh, city series uh, round robin. So, um you know, Temple was known there, but, but Coach wanted to raise the profile, and that's what he did, and he scheduled a lot of games. And uh, I remember Mark Macon was there, and I think they played a game on either a Friday night or Saturday, and then next thing, on a Sunday, they went down to North Carolina and played down there, played against Dean Smith. And, um, and I believe the game was on national TV as well, and he knew a lot of those games would be on national TV. Obviously, create a lot of interest and you know terrific exposure from the teams, and uh, and also prepare his teams for the tournament each year. Um, in 24 years, he went to 23 postseason tournaments. 17 of them were the NCAA tournament, and he went to five Final Eights. John Cheney was very successful. So, coming from Cheney, I think he took a lot of the things that he did there to Temple and probably just, you know, raise the level in each category to uh, uh, a notch or two. But basically, I mean, he, he had a he had a plan in place. And, and when he was at Temple, obviously that era of the 80s, I mean, that was an era when I was growing up to kind of, kind of date myself. So I don't, I hope I don't make you feel old or anything like that. But no, that's okay. I, uh, that's I all was, right, I man. Was, you know, I, was, <laughs> I was just, I was just getting uh, acclimated and learning about college basketball. And so, you know, my, my father, who's a, an HBC grad. And, and, and so when I saw men like uh, Cheney Thompson, uh, John Thompson, uh, Nolan Richardson, George Raveling. I mean, that was like a, a, an era um, of great coaches, but there were very few. And I, I one of the things that I pulled out, uh, and, and he was a strong advocate for, as you mentioned, uh, uh, those players and, and opportunities through education. And I, I found a quote 
where he spoke about Prop 48 at that time. And it's well, you know, we, we've seen how John Thompson, you know, walked off the court regarding Prop 48. But I thought what Thompson, I mean, what Coach Cheney said, where he said that the rule was, quote, a racist rule enacted by, quote, racist presidents. I mean, that was that, that was a powerful comment, I got to imagine, at that time. How did that go over at that time at, at Temple and, and just in the community at that time? Well, I think probably on a national level, it was a little controversial at that time, but Cheney was really adamant in terms of providing educational opportunities for kids that may not have had a level playing ground um, in terms of, you know, how they were raised in terms of uh, economics, in terms of any other resources. And what he wanted to do, he wanted to encourage kids to go to the next level. You know, like, okay, you have standards and everything, and people understand that, but that shouldn't really hurt students in terms. And I think the Proposition 48, like, you had to sit out a year, and I don't think you were eligible for a scholarship or grant and aid at that time. And so you had a lot of kids that came from families that didn't have a lot of money, and they would have to find a way to pay at least that first year. Okay, and then I think at the time uh, when John Thompson and John Cheney were, you know, pretty adamant about that, um, you lost a year. So not only do you uh, have to pay, but then you would lose a year of eligibility. So, um, yeah, he he uh, he really pushed for it, and I think his efforts paid off in the long run and I think he was successful in spite of uh, Proposition 48 because he really encouraged the kids and he let them know that they could be successful and that they could play basketball but they could also learn, they could also get a good education and they will graduate and come out in society and function and John Cheney did that and he did a terrific job. All right, Donald, uh, we're going to get ready to get you out of here on this. I want you to think back over uh, John Cheney's career, and it's kind of a twofold question. Number one, where do you place John Cheney at as among all, all African American basketball coaches? And then, B, when you take his time coaching at Cheney State at HBCU, where does he rank at among HBCU? basketball coaches all time in your in your opinion okay i would say um he's definitely on the uh, mount rushmore um in a lot of ways uh, I'll, I'll say well with hbcus i would say with uh john mcclendon and um big house games uh, big house games yeah john cheney and then after and that you yeah, Ben Job is at Southern. Yeah, it was at Southern. Uh, Davey Whitney down at uh, Alcorn State was really good. Um, and so, someone else who passed uh, at the same time, uh, a lot of people forget about Jerry Johnson down at Lemoyne on also. Yeah, he won a Division Three national title. Yeah, I just wrote something about him. Yeah, Jerry did a great job, you know, and uh, – um, you know, uh, just did a, a fantastic job down there for Lemoyne Owen and, and the Memphis community and all that. So, uh, yeah, he's right up there. And then I think even on a national level, you know, he's got to be with 790-some wins combined, Cheney and Temple. You know, he's got to be top five, top six, you know. And in terms of what he accomplished on and off the court, you know, he may be number one. You know, if you look at the totality beyond wins and losses and even players in the NBA, and he had a lot of them that went on and played too. I just think, you know, in terms of the um, the whole profile of John Chaney, you know, he's he's way up there. All right, Donald, uh, if you would, 
take a moment, tell everybody where they can find you, where they can find some of your some some of your work, uh, how to get in touch okay. with you. Yeah, um, they can go to phillytrib dot com um, and see a lot of my work. Um, just just go there and uh, you'll see a lot of the articles I've I've written and you know my email address is at the bottom of every uh, article. So if they want to reach out and say hello or you know let me know what's going on or you know tell me what they think about something, that's fine. And also. Donald's on Twitter at D Hunt T R I B. Yeah, D- That's at D Hunt T R I B on Twitter, and right. and go get the book. Go, it's on Amazon. Anywhere you can purchase a book, go go get the book. Um, Cheney playing for a legend. Um, a, a great uh, an opportunity to kind of get a from a player's perspective. Would you say uh, a, a, yes? What impact he had on two players um that were that were probably two of maybe his greatest players um at right. his time right 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 absolutely right. yeah 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 through the eyes of Aaron McKee and uh and Eddie Jones and then uh coach also you know he was interviewed throughout the book and his uh, hall of fame speech is in there he wrote one of the forwards he, he did a great job and we're gonna miss him yeah yeah, yep. the uh, memorial service for Coach Cheney is going to be on Monday, uh, February uh, February eighth. Eighth, eighth, and yeah. it'll be mm-hmm. at Temple, at Temple University, right. and so right. Um, I I've enjoyed just reading the coverage, and, and like I was kind of talking with you, Donald. It, it it's a again for and I I think Drew and I were talking. For me, my personal connection comes through you know having a uh, an aunt who went to Temple parents are mm-hmm. HBC grads my mom's from the Philly area but just I really I'm really fascinated by what we're learning uh I hate to say it in, in his passing about coach Cheney and, and hopefully yeah. we you know we don't we can we can learn more I think there's a lot that we can learn about some of our other icons that are still living and we we celebrate them and, and prior to you know having to wait to the end to kind of learn more about them you know yeah, I think you made some so, really good points there. And I, I like what you said, you know, um, we're learning more about Coach Cheney. And, you know, we celebrated him when he was here, but he probably needed to be celebrated even more. And that's what we need to do now. We need to celebrate a lot of these folks and, and, and let folks know their accomplishments and struggles to, to get to the top, you know. And I, I think that uh, helps to uh, – uh, make a stronger society. So uh, I agree. I think that that's that's really noted. All right. Again, Donald Hunt. Make sure to find him on Twitter at D Hunt T R I B. Uh, Cheney playing for a legend. Find it on Amazon and anywhere mm-hmm. you can uh, purchase books. That's the name of the book. Uh, Donald, thank you for your time. Uh, have a great weekend, um, and uh, we look forward to to reading more and reading uh, your your coverage there at the Philadelphia Tribune. Uh, and, and whenever you uh, have something on uh, ESPN's Undefeated, definitely all right. always a good Right, Undefeated. Read. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. And keep up your good work that you're doing down there. You're doing a fantastic job. All right. Thank you, sir. Take care. All right, take care. Yep.